and I wanted to share with you the basics of stroke, what it is, and what I did to save my family members' life. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope you all have a good one. Today's topic is personal for me because one of my family members suffered a stroke and one of my really good friends from college suffered a stroke as well last year. Stroke is defined as damage to the brain because it's not receiving enough blood supply. In order to understand stroke, we also need to understand what the brain does, what it is. Our brain is kind of like our command center in our body. The simple fact of moving my arm here, or talking to you, or blinking, or even storing memories, or the ability to love is controlled by our brain. The brain is also complex. If I move my left arm, the part of my brain that's controlling this is the opposite side, the right side of my brain. And if I move my right arm like this, the left side of my brain is controlling that. So if your brain is not receiving enough oxygen or blood, then that particular part of your brain that's controlling this movement cannot make you do this. It dies. Or if the part of your brain that's controlling you how to speak or talk is affected because it's not getting enough blood supply, then you wouldn't be able to talk. I wouldn't be able to talk to you or even store memories or having the ability to think or dance or jump. So that's what stroke is, damage to the brain because it's not receiving enough blood supply. And our brain needs energy to function. The form of energy is called oxygen, the air we breathe. So if we are not receiving enough oxygen in our brain, our brains cannot function. So oxygen is delivered by blood. And blood is delivered through these tubes or blood vessels. So a stroke happens if blood cannot be delivered to your brain because there's a leakage or a blockage in these blood vessels. Potential causes of uh, blockage of our blood vessels could be fatty deposits. That's why people who have high cholesterol eat a lot of fatty foods, they're more prone to getting a stroke. And I'll be discussing that in the next episode, like the causes and risk factors of having a stroke or things that increase your chances of getting a stroke. And it's such a big topic, so I'm going to divide that into two or three episodes. Now that we understand that we need oxygen in order for the brain to work, if our blood vessels or these tubes are blocked in any shape or form or if there's leakage then that would mean oxygen cannot be delivered to your brain and that part of your brain dies within a few minutes. There's a couple of signs that a person may be experiencing a stroke. You need to act fast, which is exactly our acronym, F-A-S-T. F stands for face, facial asymmetry. A stands for arm weakness. S stands for speech or sound. And T stands for time or time to call an ambulance or emergency services. So F stands for facial asymmetry or, or uneven face. Ask a person to smile or move his face. And if he has difficulty doing that, then this person may be experiencing a stroke. Ask this person to move his arm. And if he cannot move his arm, then this person may be experiencing a stroke. S stands for speech or sound. If you ask this person to speak, such as the sky is blue or my name is Kyle, and if I cannot do that, this person or me may be experiencing a stroke. And T stands for time to call. Uh, call emergency services right away and bring this person to the hospital immediately. And if there's no emergency services, then you should bring him or her to the hospital. So other signs of stroke would be sudden confusion. If he or she suddenly forgets his name or doesn't know where he is or who the president is or what the date is. When he normally knows these facts and information, then this person may be experiencing a stroke. If he or she has numbness or weakness, difficulty walking, difficulty seeing, or sudden headaches, then this person may be experiencing a stroke as well. And even if these symptoms or these signs go away within a couple of minutes, you need to err 
on the side of caution and bring this person to the hospital immediately. For example, if I suddenly can't move my arm, but then in a couple of minutes I can move it again, then I need to be brought to the hospital immediately. Hope that made sense. The next episode will be about risk factors of stroke or what are things that would increase your chances of getting a stroke. Thank you for being with me here today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. So share this with your friends and families so they may benefit from this as well. Take care, be safe, and I got your back.